What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sandbox. I am Christian Sands, and I am so looking forward to doing this interview today with two of my favorite musicians in the world. Wow. We have all the way from the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been on many recordings, hundreds and hundreds of recordings. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have a fellow mm -hmm. connection with Jackie McLean, I know, uh, all the way from hey, Charles Lloyd. You know, mm -hmm. please welcome Ruben Rogers. What's up, hey. Ruben? What's up, Christian? Ruben. Yeah. yeah. What's up, you? Hello. And we also have my brother in arms. We have been making music together for uh, many, many, many years uh, with the great Christian McBride, with his groups, with my own groups, all the way from Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, he also has many recordings. He has education programs. He's got business models. I mean, you name it, he's got sticks. <laughs> Whatever you want, it, he's yeah. got it. Please welcome yeah. Ulysses Owens. What's up, baby? Entrepreneur. <laughs> What's up, baby? <laughs> Good to see you, fellas. How you doing? How you feeling? Yeah. Hey, Good, actually, surprisingly okay. You know, yeah. despite the circumstances, you know that we're yeah, in. Yeah, you know, yeah. But you know, feeling all right. Feeling all right. You know. Yeah. How about yourself? How about yourself? Doing, doing all right. You know, uh, trying try to trying to stay positive. Trying to be productive. I don't think I don't think I've yeah. seen you with so much hair before. I know it's different. Right? I know, man. <laughs> I look like I'm doing a reboot of That's What's Happening. You know? <laughs> you, you, you look like Christian Gonzalez. <laughs> That's right. Hey, man, like, go ahead. Let me be boss to keep clean. That's right. Clean, That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. Come on over, bro. Come on over. That's right. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's get into it. Okay, let's talk about the, the, the quarantine and the uh, COVID-19. You know, how is it affecting you guys? I know it's affecting all of us because we're not outside performing, but no, no. Inside, how's it affecting you? Can you guys practice? What's happening? <laughs> I'm gonna let you start. You go ahead, man. Uh, man, it's it's been deep. Ruben and I talked a little bit about this yesterday on our chat. Um, you know, it's actually allowing me to work on stuff that I've been wanting to work on for years. Yeah. You know, my mom said to me the other day, she was like, you know, this seems like a, a lawful way for you to take the break. You know, you've been wanting because you know, mm -hmm. if you take off time, you're like, well, man, am I gonna miss out on all this work versus? I'm able to really get some rest in. Also, I'm able to learn stuff that I haven't had a chance to learn. I was telling Ruben, I'm working on learning Pro Tools now. And just, I feel like all those things that, you know, you'd be on a plane ride being like, yeah, if I had time off, I would do this. Now we have no excuse. Um, right. I think right. the first month was really rough in terms of depression. I mean, I, I'll be honest. It was because you're like, well, our industry is shattered in some regard. Um, now I'm like, okay, hey, that is what it is. Now what am I going to do? So now I've kind of entered that stage of productivity but you know man that's what we do as jazz musicians we make the best out of whatever the circumstance is so that's how it's been for me that's right that's right what about you Ruben? i mean for myself i mean i definitely had a a time you know of an adjustment of adjustment for uh the first i don't know the first three weeks or so um it's become a lifestyle for us right our lifestyle right. has been right. like on the go on the go on the go right. and you know for me i've been doing that you know really non-stop for like 20 years so it's mm -hmm. like uh to stop you know the momentum that I've been going on. I mean, I haven't, I haven't been, I was thinking, I was trying to figure it out. I probably haven't been in one place like this ever. <laughs> in wow. The year. Right. You know what right. I mean? For, uh, or at least since I've been, you know, professionally, uh, you know, touring. Uh, two months in one place. I, I've, done, I've done maybe three weeks and that was, you know, maybe Christmas vacation, you know, something like that, you know, every year. Other than that, I've never, I haven't, I haven't been in one place this long. So it's that, that adjustment. Um, uh, also, it's been great to, <laughs> to be with my daughter. I have a nine-year-old daughter. Yeah. What's funny, is funny, I'm in Santa Cruz, California, which is, you know, just up the street from Monterey. I mean, that's where I met her mother, actually. Uh, uh, when we're co-parenting cool together here, and it's, it's been beautiful to, to, to actually just be in Santa Cruz, a really chill vibe here. So I've been homeschooling my daughter, which is a pain in the butt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so it doesn't it doesn't allow me to actually get to the kind of uh, productivity I want, um, you know, on my instrument. But I have been putting it in, and I think you know, like Ulysses, like now this second month, I've been able to, you know, divide my time to get get in some good uh, some good practice time with, you know, especially with the bow and and all kinds of other things. Also, you know, get into Logic, you know, Pro. Like I've been needing to deal with that for, for, for years and, you know, trying to get productive with that. Yeah, great, great. Mm -hmm. So Ulysses, mm -hmm. with, with yeah. you, because you're home in New York, right? 
No, no, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm actually in Florida, man. Oh, you're in so, Jacksonville. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Jacksonville. So I've, I've been here literally like when they did the whole stay at home or yeah. I'd come to New York because we were already on spring break at Juilliard. So I literally right. came home to be here for like a couple of weeks and then they were just like, hey, we're switching everything to online. So I've, I've been, you know, kicking it here with the family. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that answers my question because I was going to ask, well, how <laughs> is it, you know, because you're a part of the Juilliard faculty. How is it now yeah. that everything's online? You know. It's it's a different experience. You know, it's funny. I wrote my boss the other day, Aaron Flagg, who's the administrator and, you know, Winston's artistic director. And I, I told him I really feel like I've become a better teacher because like when you don't have Zoom, when I was just walking in the classroom, I'm like, all right, here are the concerts we need to work on. Here's the repertoire. Y'all play. Let me just coach. But I mean, you know, they're Juilliard cats, so they can play versus man. This time I had to do like lesson plans and, you know, I, mean, I already had right. a syllabus, but I had to be like, OK, how do I keep them occupied for an hour and 20 minutes. But then furthermore, how do I give them something virtually that they can hold right. on to? So what I did was I actually shifted the curriculum and we were going to um, record as a group at the end of the semester. Well, I basically made them focus on all of their own records. So they basically had to do like a project plan of how they would facilitate everything from the beginning of making a record to putting it out. And man, all of them came up to me at the end. They were like, yo, you really gave us something to, you know, hold on to that we could really use. So it, it made, I feel like it made me a better educator. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Fantastic. Ruben, are you teaching from home as well? Are you just practicing? No, no. I d- I've decided. I mean, it's coming. I've had you know, some requests, but I've uh, uh, decided, you know, on purpose to not to, yeah. to do anything with, yeah. with with lessons or anything like mm-hmm. that. Because kind of like going back to what Ulysses said, I, I I guess I didn't realize I just needed this kind of like halt in in yeah. in, yeah. in um in this in in momentum in the momentum that I yeah. just was going and like just taking a, a step back, even though it's a forced one being like, okay, just breathe for a second and just step right. away from what you've been doing nonstop for, the, as I said, 20, 25 years. And, um, <clears throat> I, you know, I've, I've, you have people on me about, <laughs> but man, you need to get on social media, you need to do this and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, I don't have any social media, anything like that. Um, and <laughs> I've been like, you know what, it's been good for me to just, I mean, step away from my life, from my musical yeah, life for a right. second. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm starting to get an itch now to figure it out now, but uh, probably probably in the, in the near future that's that's gonna start. You know. Well, you uh, said it perfectly. I mean, mm-hmm. you know that 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 being on the road is your life. You know, you've yeah, been doing no doubt. this for twenty plus years. So right. now mm-hmm. being home full time, you know, raising your mm-hmm. daughter, you know, mm-hmm. practicing mm-hmm. at home, getting to stuff that you're like, I'll, I'll get to that part. I'll get to that baseline. I'll get to you know, because I'm doing mm-hmm. the same thing. I'm home. Mm-hmm. And I'm right. just practicing and I'm getting to stuff, mm-hmm. you know, like comping, like let's work at that. You yeah, know, no doubt. Get, get no doubt. That, you yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Which actually yeah. leads me to my my next question. Um, <laughs> the reason I brought you guys together specifically is because uh, mm-hmm. Ulysses and I, we have a brotherhood that goes mm-hmm. far, 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 far back. And I know you and Ulysses also have that same thing as well. No um, mm-hmm. So let me ask you this first. How did you guys meet? How did you guys form this bond, this brotherhood that you have? Well, I mean, shoot, you just, uh, he, he got a good, good way uh, of, of, it was here actually in Santa Cruz that we, no, was it? No, I'm trying to remember. Well, I felt, it was, so I felt like the first time we met, Ru- so Ruben is the, the cat that actually got me uh, the record date that we did, Christian, the unanimous. Ruben is the cat that hooked that oh, up. Oh, yeah. So we were, so bro, we were, uh, we, were okay. we were in Amsterdam and uh, in pure mm-hmm. Ruben fashion, he came with me, we were backstage at some gig. He's like, yeah, man, uh, Ulysses. And I was like, man, Ruben, man, I'm a fan. He's like, yeah, man, I hear you. You know, you out here, you doing your thing. And um, Jerry Teakins was, God rest, rest him. He, he just left us not too long ago. <clears throat> Jerry's like standing on the other side of us. He's like, yo, Jerry, man, uh, meet Ulysses. He's out here, man. He's doing this thing. He's swinging. Uh, y'all, y'all gonna need to, y'all, y'all gonna do a record at some point, you know. So yeah, y'all figure that out. Like Jerry, you need to jump on this. All right, I'll holler. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> oh, you guys good? Right, All right, cool. Yeah, yeah well, like, y'all good? But uh, I mean, that's what I remember. I mean, yeah. well, we, we had met actually, like, I think really met and like talked briefly at a Chris McBride Inside Straight show. Here. Oh, at wow. Fumba. Really? I mean, yeah. I, I, that, that I can remember. That was the first time I remember seeing you play live, as, okay. as a matter of fact, I think. Hmm. I mean, something like that. Something like that. And I was like, okay. this dude is killing. 
or if it or let's just say that was the first time I saw you play live and then we at least were like, Yeah, man, much love at the end. Right. I was able to kinda of like right. but I was like, you know, I mean I, for me, I've always had my, my ear to you know, to the ground and know who was, yeah, was you, you know, no you know, before me, what's happening now, what's happening, you know, next week. Yeah. I'm always open because I mean I just love this music and I just always right. always always know what's going on. So uh I mean that was easy when, you know, I was like, all right, shoot, all right, this, this, this next cat, you know, um, and I, you, I knew, already knew that you had like a, this kind of like, okay, what, what's next? You know, I'm, I'm moving and shaking, moving and shaking, <laughs> <laughs> and and bless his, and bless his heart, you know, uh, you know, Teakins, yeah, right, peace, right. rest in peace. He always was that kind of dude. I had played, I mean, I played on at least, you know, over twenty, twenty uh, wow. crisscross records. So it was like me and him had a good rapport, and I knew yeah. that he, you know, he's always looking for something like, "What's who's next? What's going on?" And yeah, boom, yeah. that was e- that. So that was easy, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, uh, yeah, I think so. That it was that relationship, and then I think Peter Martin really started hooking up stuff as well for us. And then that's when I think was the first time you played with him, Sands. Was it when we did my record date, or had you the onward and yeah, upward, or had was, you already? That was done? our yeah. first time playing together. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good times about that. Yeah. Tedesco. Yeah. Tedesco Studios. That's right. Oh, bro. <laughs> that was studio. that was the that was struggle. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me ask you guys this question because because uh, I you know we got a chance to play together in different varieties and different ways in your record, uh, Greg Reporter's record. Um, mm-hmm. What for you makes a good rhythm section? What for you makes it? worthwhile playing together like what do you like about Ruben's playing Ruben what do you like about Ulysses playing that attracted you to say hey I like playing with this cat anytime he needs me you know mm. let me let me play with him sensitivity mm. that's 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 probably the biggest thing the, the the one I mean description I could say you know he's this dude is the one of the most sensitive drummers I've ever played with you know what I'm saying, yeah. and uh, I mean just his humanity in the music, just the way you know he he he's he's always has that like selfless thing about his plan. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm you know, I always say I don't I don't like gas and cats heads. That's that's not who I am. You know what I mean? And I, I I keep it real. So you know, so it's easy. It's easy when you have somebody who's so sensitive, but it's organic. It's not forced. Mm, right, it's just right. easy. And, you know, I mean, I gravitate towards people who have that kind of sensitivity, which obviously you, you have that too, Christian, you know? So, I mean, that's why, that's why it was easy for us to do that, that, you know, big shout out to Gregory, man. That was, yeah, that's a that, great project. That yeah, was, yeah. that was one of the, man, that was one of the, one of the finest time, you know, moments, yeah. I think in my career, I feel just, you know, the whole yeah. thing with the orchestra and everything. Yeah. That was, that was, that was, that was incredible. incredible. Yeah. What about <laughs> you, Ulysses? I mean, I, I, you know, having you and I, Christian, having had a chance to work with somebody really great, obviously, um, after after that, it's like, OK, your what you desire from a bass player becomes really unique. Right. Yes, it does. And <laughs> and and it's and you don't just desire a bass player. You desire a person who has a big spirit, who happens to be a bass player. And that mm-hmm. for me is what Ruben is. And like he talks about my sensitivity. What I love about Ruben, when I call him, he is going to hold it down. Like no matter whether we playing in seven, whether we playing in five, you know, he's got a beautiful touch. But beyond that, like I know his ethic and his ability to make sure not only is his part taken care of, he's going to make choices musically that makes the entire thing come together. So literally, like I had this project, Songs of Freedom, and I remember talking to management and they're like, well, who do you want? And all this different stuff. And I was like, I just started first with bass. I was like, Ruben has to be on this. I don't care what we find him in from. I'm sure he's gonna be in Timbuktu on another tour, on another making a record. But I was like, because I knew it was, it was a, you know, he go, and then he's gonna be dealing with the Sony, you know, Africa division, and we have to bring him in for a day. Um, but I knew I was like, if I get Ruben in the room, he's gonna make my life easier, and he's gonna make the things that I need to do easier because he has a way of making certain musical choices that make me more comfortable about the things that I want to do. So, and then on top of that, you know, he's virtuosic, great ears. You know, harmony, you can read. I mean, all, all that. But I think, like he talked about my humanity, his personality is to make sure everything is taken care of. And that and, and you know, and same thing, like when you play Sans, I know that the entire piano is going to be covered. I'm not dealing with a person who can't play. When I have someone like you on the bandstand, it's like 
it's a virtual so that whatever I ask can be done. And so mm -hmm. that, and cause you know, out here, man, it's hard. So you want to yeah. have cats who can, who have a broad range of what they can do. So with Ruben Rogers on the bandstand, if I'm fortunate to have you, man, this it's it's like, all right, so what else are we going to worry about? Cause we ain't got to worry about no music. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> right, exactly. So let's pull it back. Let's let's do this. Uh, let me ask you both if you could be. I mean, and it's hard because you guys have both played with so many different people, so many amazing artists. What uh, actually, who who would be in your dream rhythm section if you had like a dream rhythm section, <laughs> living or or deceased? In any style, it could be gospel, it could be whatever you want it to be. Oh my like God. for me, if, if we're funking, if we're playing funk, it's yeah. Paul Jackson and Mike Clark. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that's right, that's right. that's like one of the, the, the things I would love to just feel that 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 heat mm -hmm. and that rhythm and all that. So right. up to you. Uh, I'll give it to you, Ulysses. You know, what's your what's man, your dream? I mean I mean honestly, man, I ain't saying it because y'all on here. I would say like this trio and if, if we could bring Roy Hargo back. You know, and then like, like that, like that, and then maybe like, uh, um, man, this would be weird. Roy Hargrove, Cannonball Adderley. <laughs> hey, no, that'd be killing. This that three, be you know, at all. hey, listen, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then have, and then have a uh, GP have Gregory Porter sing a couple tunes. That'd be like so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, it stands. And then, and then Fred Wesley on the trombone. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the record's called Cheddar Biscuits. <laughs> what about you, What about you? Hey, Ruben? you know what? It's funny. I've been, I've been asked somewhat that question a little bit over, over my career. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cause you played in I've so never, many different configurations. And, I, that have been and I've never been able to come up with a, uh, a answer because yeah. to tell you the truth, I always feel I'm taking away from the moment. I'm taking away from the yeah. music that I'm playing with right then. You know what I mean? I hate Not, and I gotta, I got to really honestly say, I've never been like, I wish I could or I hope I could because I, I'm been that blessed that to, to have experience with incredible musicians on a consistent basis, you right. know? But I mean, if I had to think about it, you, you, you brought up a uh, J Mac, you know, Jack right. and the Clean. Right. Yeah. I mean, I only had a very short stint with him. Uh, it was, you know, shoot, maybe a, a, a maybe three weeks worth of gigs over, you know, maybe wow. a half a year or something like that. What's funny? I have a I have a, a DAT player I just just pulled out, and I have wow. a, a couple a DAT of that recording. I need to transfer. Maybe so I'll for the younger that. viewers, a DAT player. Is. <laughs> in 1992, it's a digital digital audio tape. I mean, that was pre like I guess right before CDs or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. um, I mean, that was the way you used to record. But I mean, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me digress. Um, Jack McLean, I would love to play with him again. That sound, that feeling. Yeah. Um, maybe Jack DeJanet. You know. Uh, uh, shoot, I don't know, man. Uh, so, uh, Gonzalo. Gonzalo oh yeah! Oh, yeah. Man, I, 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 I want to play with Gonzalo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pianist. You know, I'm like, yeah, let me. I mean, the list will go on and I'll on and on and on. The list will go on and on and on. But today, truth, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I, yeah. whatever, man. You know, wh whatever the next gig is, whatever it's going to be, <laughs> a right, year from right. now whatever or six months. Right. Right. I'm right, looking right, forward right. to that one. You know, that's yeah. going to be the beautiful one. That's going to be that's the best it. one for sure, for sure. So I know we have a few minutes left. Uh, two questions. Um, well, actually, uh, let's talk about Ulysses, your uh, Don't Miss a Beat uh, yeah. organization. Tell us about that. Tell us how we can be a part of it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's an amazing organization that you started with your parents. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so with the whole family. Let us yeah, know man. Uh, what's going on with that. Yeah. So, so very, very quickly, it's an uh, after-school arts programming. It's free arts programming for uh, what I like to call at-hope kids, uh, which some would label as inner-city kids. But we're 12 years old, and we started as a music and art summer camp. Uh, and we also have an after-school uh, homework assistance programming. And we now have an Academy of the Arts, which kids can come and get free instruction in the areas of music, dance, you know, musical theater. They, we now added yoga as well. And we really are kind of that hub for the community, man. And so it's, it's always say it's going to be my life's work. I'm artistic director. And it's really amazing to have something that I give to 365 days out of a year. Because, you know, having a career as a musician, it can be very selfish where you're just 
dealing with you, but like with this man, I'm watching kids grow up. We're making sure they right. get into good schools. Then we make sure they get into college. So it's a whole network, man. And I mean, it's it's also taught me a lot about how to grow something and build something long term. So I love it in terms of how to get into uh, get up there with us or interact with us. We're on Instagram at you know don't miss a beat. Uh, don't miss a beat org is our website. And, uh, you know, man, I always say to people, they're like, well, what can I do? I can't do much. I'm like, whatever you want to do is fine. Or even if you just want to send good vibes or follow us on Facebook or Instagram and just continue to check in with what we do. But, uh, it, it's, I love it, man. It's, it's some, I never would have thought in a million years I would be a jazz musician who has a nonprofit organization, but our community needed what we were doing. So, hey, it's yeah. what we do. So how did you, how did you even start that? You know, what, what made you so, go into that? Sure. So I had always had the desire with Juilliard. We went to Costa Rica many years ago and we did a concert at a community like center. And I remember like sitting there and like we were playing for the community, not some, you know, ritzy audience that bought a ticket. It was like these people were bringing potluck dinners and yeah, like yeah. hanging out as a family and checking out the music. And I never forgot that. And so I came back to my mom and was like, hey, how do we do this? So very short sort of truncated version. We went to what was called the Jacksonville Children's Commission. And we looked up because uh, they, they basically create a lot of programs. And so we saw that they had a summer camp bid and they really wanted organizations to create a summer camp bid in very much like what they call Section 8 communities. So we basically created, you know, the business. We got our 501c3 and then I created the artistic mission. And basically, you know, we said, hey, we're going to set up in a gymnasium and we're going to teach 100 kids for eight weeks. And at the end, we're going to put on our own uh, show. We wrote the original music. We wrote a musical and we did that in the city. It was like, man, you. There was no crime in that that neighborhood the whole time we were there. They were like, so can y'all go to another neighborhood and do it? And so now, twelve years later, we have two community centers, two buses. We're probably we're serving kids at twelve to fifteen schools. I'm a consultant at you know three or four different schools. I'm changing uh, different things within their music program, and then I'm also a community advocate. So I'm sitting, you know, in city council meetings and advocating for educational programs. So it it started as just how do we make a difference? And we went to this one agency. Now we're state funded, nationally funded. Um, so it just I always say if you want to do something, uh, just have a seed of an idea and and but also bust your butt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's, the That's first right. the first five work. years, nobody gave to us. I mean, right. nobody gave to us for the first five years. We had to fund it. Now we're getting to the point where people are exposed. So anyway, man, it's it's. It's amazing, and I love it. It's what makes my heart beat every day. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I've, I've experienced firsthand, man. You're oh, doing yeah. an incredible job, brother. Incredible. Thank you, brother. Incredible. Thank incredible. you. Absolutely beautiful, Thank man. Yeah, I got to get down there, too, so just mm. let me know. Yeah, man, come, come on. Know. Definitely. Come on definitely, now. Definitely. <laughs> well, you give, guys, give me one you. day. Yeah, man. Of <laughs> That's right. Give me, I'm going to give you a week because it's nice. Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And anyway, Disney World. <laughs> right, exactly. Anyway, guys, you've been amazing. Thank you guys yeah. for, so much for doing this. Yeah, Thank man. you, audience, for tuning in. Yeah. You know, yeah. please click subscribe. Subscribe mm -hmm. to us. You know, follow right. us on social medias. Yep. Uh, I know, Ruben, you don't have social media, but, you know, that? we'll What's work that? it out. We'll, we'll work <laughs> Come out. on, Ruben. Come on. Work. Well, y'all might see me. Y'all will be like, oh man, I wish he was off. Why are you joining? Uh, you know. But keep yeah, up the good work, Christian. We love you, buddy. Definitely, guys. Yeah, Christian, great job. Yeah, bro. man. We'll get together soon. All right. Peace.